Gate 14's own Johnny Junta joins the Locked On podcast today to talk all kinds of different things related to your Toronto Blue Jays. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays. Yes, indeed, I am Locked On Blue Jays. I am thankful that you're choosing to spend part of your day talking Toronto Blue Jay baseball with me coming off of taking two out of three. That, that's a little more like it, right? I know Milwaukee's not a great team. But it's a first-place team and two out of three. I predicted a sweep in the series, but ultimately, I, I suppose we are going to take two out of three here. Locked On Blue Jays, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe, that like, that comment. Welcome to some new subscribers like Jar Pie and James Reckling. Every day is making Locked On Blue Jays your first podcast listen of the day. Thank you for that. Today with Johnny Junta, we talk Gate 14, we talk John Schneider, we talk Dalton Var show, we talk Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Matt Chapman, George Springer. Okay, we, we talk a lot of things related to your Toronto Blue Jays. Let's get into it. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays, and you are... Seeing this correctly, joined, depending on, I'm not smart enough to know how this will look on your screen, so either on your left or on your right, either way, you do see there's another uh, gentleman uh, with me here today, Johnny Junta, the, it, uh, I guess I have to, to preface it, the infamous, no, the infamous at this point, no, Johnny, the infamous <laughs> yeah, Johnny yeah, Junta? Yeah, some may say infamous, yeah. yeah. From certainly infamous Gate 14 podcast, certainly infamous goes with Gate 14 pod at this point uh, in the game, absolutely yes, uh, but Johnny, I want to thank you for taking some time to talk Toronto Blue Jay baseball uh, with us here, first and foremost, how are things on your end, and how are things with the uh, explosive, uh, and, and I'm talking about the growth uh, of Gate 14 pro uh, podcast? It's doing well, yeah, it's doing well, uh, it's, it's reaching boundaries, and uh, it's reaching places that I never thought it'd reach, uh, <laughs> It's just crazy. Yeah. Like I said, like I told you before we recorded, it's like we're barely a year in and it's already doing this. So I, I'm excited to see what the future of it is, but can't be satisfied yet. Got to sleep. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. Just like the Blue Jays. We got to keep oh, going. Just going to say that. Just going to say just like the Blue Jays. You got a great answer. So, Johnny, let's start. Let's have some fun with some with some gate 14 uh, conversation here. So, of course, you have you have Johnny, you have Avery, you have Jr. Uh, the I think the majority of people watching here on the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast would follow Gate 14 podcast. It, it, it's doing huge things right now. So I think a lot of people will, will, will know the three characters in play here. So, Johnny, yourself, Avery, and JR, Gate 14 podcast is out enjoying a nice, nice dinner together. Here comes the waiter or the waitress, puts the check right in the middle of the table. Who is it, Johnny? Is it Avery? Is it JR? Who's reaching for that check? I'm going to say it's me. It shouldn't okay, be me. Wow. JR is the JR, as I said all the time on the podcast, the richest one out of us three. Um, I think it's me that soaks it. I love, I, 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 I'm not a money saver, which is a crutch of mine. I love spending it. So I will 100% be buying the drinks or I always, I always wow. take the initiative to buy the tickets for the boys or whatever, or the drinks or whatever, but Avery is pretty, pretty good with that stuff too. So I would say it's a mix like, but I, I love taking control. I will, I will, I'll soak the check right <laughs> off the bat. That's what I do. So it sounds like we're, we're getting a little bit of a glimpse into the method to JR's madness. That's how he's staying so rich. He's hanging out with, with you and Avery picking yeah, up his checks yeah, all the time. Well, JR doesn't go out that much. So uh, if you see the Gate 14 boys out, obviously he's in LA now. But uh, even when he was here, you won't see him out that much. So um, it's usually just me and Avery going out just being idiots and uh, <laughs> JR being responsible at home. But that's usually what it's been, and that's what's kind of being right now, especially with JR in LA. Now, how about Johnny, Jr. Avery on the Gate 14 podcast trio there? Who has the sickest shoe game? I think it has to be. Uh, that's me. I, I have ah. a thousand dunks. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been I said it, I tweeted it before uh, the season started. I'm going to up the shoe game. So I just bought a pretty decent amount of dunks. I'm going to I'm going to buy a couple Concord Jordan Concords. Um, yeah, I'm stepping it up this year. This this year, the shoe game has just been electric for me. I'm buzzing with it, and I'm taking pride in it. So I think that's just just a no doubter. Avery wears socks and sandals, so I wouldn't even uh -oh. put him even in that discussion. Uh oh, okay. So not <laughs> only Gate 14 to the moon, but but Johnny Ajunta's shoe collection to the moon in 2023. Okay, good yeah. to know. Now, and, and I think I may have seen this firsthand myself. I may know the answer here, but of Johnny, of Avery, of Jr., who's the Gate 14 podcast member who is likely to miss or at least be late for a gig because he's found a. A, a lovely young lady to to spend some time. With. I'm gonna go just late. I would probably say Jr. Maybe I, I I don't know to be honest. Like Avery bringing a girl to uh, Kikuchi Corner was wild. Um, <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, yeah, I'd probably say maybe Avery. I I have OCD with being late to things. Um, like 
I can't be late to anything. I just, uh, that's just how I was raised and just how I was in college and stuff like that. So it's impossible for me to be late to anything on the planet. I just, I hate it. I despise it. So I'd probably say I'm the least, maybe Avery, maybe JR. I don't know. JR is pretty responsible too. He's the business guy of the pod. So I feel like he would never be late to anything just based off his business background. So I'd probably say Avery. I'd have to say Avery. It would have to take uh, quite a quite a special young lady in the Corona rooftop to get to get Johnny G to be late for something. Is that it? For sure, yeah. Okay. No, it have to it have to be a wife type. It'd have to be a wife. Okay, yeah. And finally, a Gate fourteen podcast. Now, Johnny, fate of the world. We need a hit. Yes, fate of the world. We need a hit. It's going to be against big league pitching. Who could step in the batter's box right now? Is that Johnny? Is that Avery? Is that Jer? Who could step in the box right now and give the world the best chance at getting that hit? I'd probably say it's me. I mean, I know I'm just pumping my tires here, but like I'm the only one that hit at a college level. I wouldn't call it hitting, but JR (laughs) played like rep growing up. Me and Avery played elite. Um, I would probably say me. I mean, Avery was more of a pitcher type, and I don't know what his stance. I, 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 I can't picture Avery taking a swing other than a golf club. So I'm gonna probably say me. I I wouldn't give. I the world would be screwed, but I it would definitely have to be me at the end of the day. It, it, it sucks to say it, but it would have to be me. That's not a good thing. No. Okay. Okay. And who's the pitcher? You you already know you could get that hit off of. I, you've daydreamed this, Johnny. Come on, I know this. A, pi- seen... a big league pitcher, I could 100 percent get a hit off Adam Simber. There's no doubt. Uh, Adam really? Simber throws 83 down the. Mid- if I knew it was a fastball, like if he wasn't throwing his off speed stuff, or if he if he came at me with an 83 mile an hour fastball, which is what he throws, I would I would get a hit off that. I mean, I think a lot of people that have played baseball in their life could get a hit off Adam Simber if he's throwing fastballs. It's literally 86 mile an hour, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, or 83, 86 type mile an hour fastballs in the strike zone. I I, I think I'd give a. I think that's one guy I can maybe get. Maybe Julio Tehran last night. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Boy, it'd have been nice if if some of our Toronto Blue Jays could have done something against Julio Tehran. Yeah, uh, well, my goodness, uh, Julio Tehran. If if you thought you recognized him as the person who served you at Best Buy last week, that that was Julio Tehran. But yeah. but and then there he is carving the Blue Jays last night. But anyway, okay. Johnny, let's get into some Toronto Blue Jay talk here. Now, I always like to ask this of our guests because it, I, I, I'm intrigued to know where your head's at. You know, what's this is going to show me? You know, what you covet, what what you've got as the top dog priority for the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. So, if I were to tell you, Johnny, that I actually have come back from the future, and uh, the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays actually win the World Series, I can actually tell you they win the World Series. What's your immediate reaction to that? Well, then, Craig, if that's the case, then you know X must have gone really well. What's the X for you, Johnny? I would probably say it would have to be it have to be Dalton Varsho figuring it mm. on the plate. Uh, that's a guy who's going to be getting prime at bats, the most at bats. He's in the four hole today. Yep. He would have to have figured it out. I mean, this lineup, the bottom of the order's done a good job. I mean, you got Kevin Kiermaier who's looking good. Brandon Belt's been on the loose in uh, May. A lot of these guys that are overperforming, like Kevin. Obviously, Kevin Kiermaier is way overperforming. Same with same with Brandon Belt. It would have to be Dalton Varsho figuring it out at the top of the order. Um, that's a guy that you picked up to obviously have a presence and a lefty bat that hits home runs, and he's just not doing that. His OPS is terrible at home. I don't know what's going on with him, but he that's a guy that's going to have to figure it out for this team to be good because they invested so much in him by trading their high, high assets and Gabriel Moreno and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. So I would say if the Jays won the World Series, it'd have to be because um, Dalton Varsho figured it out at the plate which is he's not doing right now, obviously. Mm-hmm. No, I love that answer. I'm so intrigued by this whole Varsho trade. I, I've said many times that I really believe the Blue Jays have never been in better hands than Shapiro and Atkins. It's, it's the first time in franchise history, at the very least, where a, a annual, a perennial contender has been built. We, we've seen spurts of, of playoff teams before, but the Blue Jays have been a playoff contender for a couple of seasons and, and will continue to be for a few seasons more. But a definite criticism for me of Shapiro and Atkins is that cupboard is pretty bare when it comes to pitching that they've drafted and developed, but also when it comes to outfielders that they've drafted and developed. So I kind of get why they were looking at Varsho. There's a, a young controllable with a, an outfielder with a controllable contract. So I do get that that whole aspect of it. Coming right up on the Locked On Blue Jay podcast, more with Johnny Junta from Gate 14. But first, I want to talk about, I finally have a good answer when people ask me, hey, Craig, we're going to get last minute tickets in particular to Blue Jay games. Yes, but just to any event really in general, I mean, buying tickets to these things shouldn't be stressful, right? And game time, game time is the fast and easy way to buy your tickets. I've been to three Blue Jay games this season already, thanks to the game time app, the ease of use. I mean, I, I, I really appreciate it. I'm never the one you're going to come to for 
for technical help or anything like that. So the fact that the Game Time app is so easy to use is a big deal for me. I'll be using it again uh, for at least one of the games in that Houston series uh, coming up as well. You get images of the seats before you buy them, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You buy the tickets in a matter of seconds. It's two taps, and you're all set. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Now, again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Love it. Big picture wise, John, because it's so easy. I mean, you know. We have such expectations for the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. And clearly right now, you know, Moreno's doing well. Lourdes is doing well. Varsho, to your point, not so much. Big picture-wise, Johnny, talk to Blue Jay fans off the ledge right here or or or, or tell them to jump, you know, depending how you see it here. But big picture-wise, where do you think that trade's going to work out? Where, where, where do you think? Because he's here for at least three more seasons, right? So what, yeah. what are your overall thoughts on Dalton I, Varsho? I, I'm not worried about him, to be honest. Yeah. I, listen, I, it's just he's a very streaky hitter. That's one thing that you learned. Uh, even with the trade, I mean, he's not, he's not going to give you a 280, 290 average. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a guy that's going to give you plus defensive stuff and he's going to hit home runs. I think he's going to figure it out. I hope it's soon. Um, and we have a longer time period for him to figure it out compared to if Lourdes didn't resign here or stuff along those lines. Um, that was a need that they had. It was a lefty bat that could play the outfield. Obviously they have that with Kevin Kiermaier now, but you ne- obviously you never thought that he would be doing this. Uh, this is a guy that you needed. Like this was a need for the Toronto Blue Jays last year. Mm-hmm. If you look at their lineups, the entire lineup was righty bats. All you do is throw a righty. It's just the, a, a ton of mismatches there. Um, I, I think he's good. I, it's it's tough to back him up right now. His at bats are terrible. He pops up everything, mm-hmm. strikes out, he's swinging on top of baseballs. It's just I, it's hard to back up what he's doing right now. But I truly do think he'll figure it out, and this offense will figure it out. I mean, they're above five hundred, and they refuse to hit home runs. Jeez. Um, it's just it, it's a long race. It's a, it's a marathon, some may say, but holy shit, is this hard to watch right now? I'm not going to mm. talk people off the ledge with it because they have their right <laughs> to be they have their right to be mad about this. Um, they have the right to be mad about Dalton Varsho, especially based off of how the other guys are performing, but. It's a long process with it, and it's a long season. And once he heats up, he's going to be special, man. I mean, we haven't we haven't even been able to see the good version of Dalton Varsho yet. And when he's good, he's really good. So we'll see. I love that. I love the point as well you make there, Johnny, about uh, with Varsho. You know, it's easy as we we're saying to get you know the twenty twenty three look, but he's going to be here for a couple of years. There's no way that Lourdes was here longer than this year or Teo. So with Varsho, it's a great point. A lot more kicks at the can yeah. for the Blue Jays to make this work going forward. I like that a lot. Now, Johnny, let's get into. For me, I'll tell you, it's a sore subject. It, it's it's part of the reason for the for the bolt. I'll tell you that right now. So there's two parts to this. You know, part two is why on earth? What did they see in John Schneider? I, I was praising Shapiro and Atkins earlier, but this is going to be the opposite. Part two of this is what did they see in John Schneider that made them have to act and 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 hire him right in that moment there. But part one of this, Johnny. They did, Blue Jays didn't even wait until the World Series was over. So they, by rule, didn't even weren't even able to talk to all the potential candidates. They didn't bring in anybody to interview. Other teams, even when they have somebody in mind, they'll bring in other people to interview, especially veterans like the Joe Maddens and the all these American League East heavyweights that were out there. At least bring them in because here they come with their game plan, and you learn something. You you learn some strategies. You take something away from that. Uh, managements in all sports have been doing this in all managerial hires. The Toronto Blue Jays, and again, part two is what did they see in John Schneider that said, "Hey, we better pull this trigger quickly here." But part one, Johnny, not even a not not even a legitimate process in vetting John Schneider or seeing who else out there was interested. Who's the next up and coming batting coach, bench coach that's interested. Who's somebody that we never would have dreamt would have been interested in the Toronto Blue Jays. For example, they reached out to Don Mattingly thinking that was a long shot. Well, Don Mattingly was intrigued with what the Toronto Blue Jays were building here. So Johnny, let's start with part one of this. What, what did you make of the process of hiring John Schneider? I just think it was, I guess you can categorize it as lazy. I mean, <laughs> There's not much better out there, though. That's the only thing. It's like, who are you? Like, Joe Girardi, he sucks. I, it, it's it, There's not, like, Don Mattingly is a terrible manager. He got fired after a 92-win season. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's not like that guy is going to replace you and just be the savior that you need. Um, I don't know where to be. I, it, it, it's a weird process. I mean, he's familiar with this team. That's the only, I guess 
point you can make with that. He's mm-hmm. handed a great baseball team. So it's hard to judge a manager manager when they're gifted a really good baseball team. I, I, he makes a lot of bonehead mistakes. Obviously, you see it this year, but that's what comes with the first year manager. It just I, I, I truly don't know what they did see in him besides the fact that he's been with this team for a long time and he had a good second half of the year last year with obviously a really good team on paper. So it's hard mm-hmm. to judge a manager when they're gifted everything. That That's where I stand with that. I don't know. Yeah, let's start with Slim Daddy Vladdy. My goodness, uh, when you've got Gate 14 Pod coming on, you better do your math and do your homework here. So I did some, uh, I, I did some, some adding. I did some mathing, Johnny. And if you take out, so from from the beginning of the 2021 season, if you take out all those uh, home runs, hits, everything that Vlad did at Salem Field and at the Needham Field, so if you only you know look at Vlad in Major League ballparks since the beginning of 2021, he's hitting 281 with a home run every 19 at bats, which is about a 30 home run pace. So for the last, you know, two and a half seasons, what we've seen from Vlad is a 281 hitter with at about a 30 home run pace. I mean, anything south of 300 for, for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in my mind, Johnny, is an absolute abomination, like just completely unacceptable. Uh, 30 home runs, I would expect him to be at least in the mid to high 30s. I would expect him to be flirting with 40, to be totally honest with you. I've just seen nothing close to what I really thought I was going to see on the big league level from Vladimir Guerrero Jr. As I say, I haven't heard the extension talks in a while, and they, of course, were fast and furious in the offseason. Johnny, where are you on Vladimir Guerrero Jr.? I think it's not even really a debate. Like I, I just think Bo Bichette has earned... Uh, the three hundred plus million dollar contract over Vladdy. I mean, just based off of season to season, we're talking about Bobachet, who has led the league in hits back to back years. I think he's leading in this year, or yeah. he's at least at the top yeah. of the uh, at the top of the list this year. Um, he's cleaned it up defensively, Bobachet. Obviously, now he's really he's, you. You can make the case he's a good defender now. Um, he's shown strides of improving every single year, Bobachet. I mean, there's not really much to improve on because he's already really good. So. Um, Vladdy, if you look at the numbers, I mean, he's underperformed three out of the four seasons he's been in the big leagues. So I, I don't know even how you have contract discussions and sell and, and as you're an agent for Vladdy, sell him making more than Boba Shet or even being in the same range as Boba Shet. And Boba Shet plays a prime position in shortstop, mm-hmm. impossible to find a good hitter at that position. Um, you saw what Trey Turner got in the offseason, <laughs> and, and like. Vladdy's position is not really a prime position. You you could really you could uh, this isn't a knock on him, but you can look at Rowdy Telez's numbers, not that far off from Vladdy, yeah. right? And it's not that hard to find a power right-handed bat that plays first base. I know not a Gold Glove potent, not a Gold Glove first baseman, but yeah, it's just I I don't know where I'm at with Vladdy. I, it, it's just such a weird when he struggles, he struggles, man, and I. What we saw from that season, the 2021, was was special, and I know it's not. It's really hard to mimic that, and obviously, uh, d- do something as similar to that, but somewhere close to it at least. He's not even in the same stratosphere of where he was in 2021. I mean, he is just the clutch at bats in the ninth. He's hitting below 200, and I don't know how to calculate that, but the clutch stuff, he's hitting below 200 in that. Um, it's it, it, he's not making a case for him to be paid as much as Bo or in the $300 million range. That's for damn sure with what he's been doing. So it, it's a tough conversation for sure. You know, what's funny is, as I was even going to say, if you take your mind's eye to all the big at bats he's got, when has he come through? When is it? Well, well, you just laid out the stats under 200 in those situations. I'm not even surprised that, that, that it is that bad. We've been waiting for a signature moment from Vlad for a while. I, I'm absolutely stunned. I mean, I, I really, I thought this guy was a, was a surefire hall of fame and, and he still could be, I mean, what, 24 years old, right? I mean, there's no yeah, time. He's still young. There's, yeah. No need to push the panic button, certainly. But uh, to, to your point and to my point, I think it's very, um, very fair to say that uh, we, we've been a little underwhelmed with Vlad and, and especially, you know, he hits in the third spot in this lineup. That's a prime. You mentioned Varsho. How is Varsho hitting the fourth spot? And these are prime spots in the lineup, man. Needs some production out of these spots. Or speaking of production uh, in those spots in the middle of the lineup, and, and, and extension talks that are no longer happening or, or from the fan base, right? Oh, boy. Johnny, Matt Chapman went from Paul Molitor in April to Rymel Tapia in May. Like, what? I've never seen – month to month, we see people month to month all the time. That That's part of baseball, yes. But to this level, to these extremes, I'm absolutely stunned. The only thing I can think of is, is it fatigue, Johnny? I mean, it's been a, it's been a bear of a schedule early on. He's playing every single day because his approach, everything at the plate seems the same to me. But all of a sudden, that fastball at, at the top of the zone where pitchers his entire career have gotten him out, he was hitting that in April. All of a sudden, again, he's late to that party in May. So, my goodness, I mean, 
and, and Johnny, stunningly, the defense. I mean, it hasn't been horrible, but it hasn't been Matt Chapman level defense. So, yeah, I, mean, I just, I mean, what, what are your, th and and you mentioned earlier, boy, you saw the contract Trey Turner got. Well, that's Matt Chapman's a Scott Boris guy, right? And uh, are, are we looking at Matt Chapman for the next 10, 11, 12 years when we've got a Relvis Martinez who I haven't given up on that needs a, a position next season? We have Addison Barger who needs a position next season. Where are you on Matt Chapman in 2023? And long term, are, are you looking to re up with this guy? He's not going to be a Blue Jay. That's hmm. pretty clear. I mean, he's going to get overpaid somewhere. Um, it just sucks seeing guys like Marcus Simeon be so successful elsewhere. Jeez. I don't see that, though, with Matt Chapman. I don't see Matt Chapman. Matt Chapman hasn't shown signs of, like, what Marcus Simeon showed signs of before he was a Toronto Blue Jay. Like, Marcus Simeon was an MVP uh, candidate yep. when he was with the A's. He's shown signs of being able to be a really good hitter. Matt Chapman's always really been known as, like, that defensive guy that has a little bit of pop. Um, I really do wish Marcus Simeon was still here, obviously. Jeez. If you look at his numbers, just like every Toronto Blue Jays fan wishes he was here. Um, it's just a weird spot to be in. I... Matt Chapman is a hitter that is very streaky, and this team is just full of hitters that are streaky. That's the tough thing. Mm. Every like, there's no consistent guys. I mean, Kiermaier and Bo, like Brandon Belton, pretty consistent, I guess, this year, way more than what he's been, uh, what his contract was. But he's a really streaky hitter, and when he's bad, it's bad, man. It's like this is really bad to watch. His at bats are terrible. The high fastball, he swings through it no matter what the speed. I think he got 92 blown past him yesterday. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it. He's a guy where it's it's he's just his stock is dropping and dropping and dropping this month. And it's I don't know how you can sell a guy like this at the plate um, to be over a two hundred million dollar guy. I don't know how Boris mm -hmm. is going to be able to do that. He might somewhere. Someone's going to overpay for him. But, yeah, it's been really bad. It's been really tough to watch. And that's just kind of a, a sentiment or just like what the Toronto Blue Jays month of May has been. Just the guys that are supposed to be good. Vladdy Chapman aren't being good that's just what it's been so it's it just it's been a terrible month with johnny junta of the gate 14 podcast now johnny we just finished we just passed the one-third point of the season officially the one-third mark of the season so who of these blue jays that definitely did not perform up to their capabilities anyway in the first third who are you sitting there saying oh craig that, that that one though don't even worry that one's about that that one's poised to to really do some things here so you've got george springer we just talked about vlad and chapman talked about varsho i think you can throw kirk and jansen in the mix as people who are well below what they should be doing and i mean this part's not for the faint of heart johnny but even an espinal or a bijou or, or either one of them who i think we need as trade chips right johnny like i think we need yeah. you guys to to start performing here so who on that list or, or is there somebody a dealer's choice somebody else you're thinking of uh that you know i was underwhelmed with this player craig but i think he's really going to take up but who are you looking to really take off going forward i think it's springer i mean springer's okay. hit, hit 287 in the month of may hitting 309 in the last 28 days this is a guy who was struggling like crazy i mean he yes. was embarrassing to watch like the first month and a half i guess you could say or a month and two weeks or a month and a week i guess um that's a guy who really figured it out i mean that's a guy who you know is going to produce there at the top of the lineup i think he's one of the has the most lead off or second most lead off home runs in mlb history um this is a guy who's a vet who knows how to get out of slumps he's been in slumps multiple times in his career that's a guy who i could just never worry about He'll always be able to just do something, at, at least be productive when he's hitting really well um, and be able to do, be a massive bat at top of the lineup. I know he sucked, but yeah, this is a guy that's underperforming if you look at his stats, but he will figure it out and he will be a massive part of this team, just like he was last year, just like he was the year. Like, he'll always be a big part of this Toronto Blue Jays club. We talk about the trade deadline. I keep seeing the Blue Jay fans, you know, dreaming big. I who can fan is short for fanatic, right? So who can yeah. you dream big, dream big? I get it. I'm right there with you. Uh, I want Liam Hendricks as much as the next guy. I, I I've got dreams of of a blockbuster with with Chicago, where we bring in Tim Anderson as well and move Bo over to second and Lu and Lucas Giolito. By like I, I I've got big dreams as well. Yeah. But my point, Johnny. I, I've got a few things here on, on the trade front. First of all. What trades could possibly happen where the Blue Jays become better in their own division than New York, Baltimore, or Tampa? Then you've got to become better than Houston. On top of all of that, isn't it possible that the Blue Jays need to not only make a trade to shore up the pitching, the rotation, and, and the bullpen, but isn't it possible they need to look to move on from Alec Manoa and you say Kikuchi? So isn't it possible they've got a lot more heavy lifting to do with the roster than they even thought? And on top of all that, Johnny, who are these assets that yeah, there's no general assets. managers are, are, are pounding down the door. I've just got to have hey, this person's available. Are you kidding? Get the Blue Jays online too. There's yeah, there's no, there's no one. This is, I said this on gate 14. There's, 
this is it. This is the Toronto Blue Jays roster, in my opinion. There's no one they could trade. Maybe like the only person they that they could probably trade that has at least value for a team that's like, oh, I really need like a good defense at third baseman is like Matt Chapman. He's not going anywhere. Um, there's no one you could trade. There's no big prospects knocking the door down, like you said, that like a Ralvis Martinez, maybe. I don't even know what you get for that guy. I there's really nothing that I can see from this team and depth wise that they could trade and pick up a Tim Anderson or a Liam Hendricks. I don't know what you do. Their hands are tied. There's no prospects available. Like there's no, besides Ricky Tiedemann, who's going nowhere, obviously Mm -hmm. there is no one they could pick or trade that is going to make a significant difference to make them better than the, like the rest of the AL East. That's it. This is the team that they have. Ross has his hands tied. That's it. I don't know what they're going to do. You can't trade draft picks in baseball. So there's just there's nothing you could do. That's it. This is what it is. It sucks to say it, but they, this team has to figure it out together because there's no one coming in. And I don't think they're going to get Liam Hendricks. I don't think they're going to get Tim Anderson. They have nothing to trade that is going to entice the Chicago Bla- Chicago White Sox mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, like, and that's all on the surface, Johnny. That's just talking Blue Jays and White Sox. Of course, the White Sox are fielding calls from 20 other teams as well. So it's going to be a bidding war. So not only do the Blue Jays show up to this gunfight with 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 a bunch of knives but here come the the, the machetes and the thing like people are coming with or people are becoming with serious offers for guys that the blue jays want so yeah i'm i'm very concerned about that aspect of it so johnny take us out of here with your prediction on i mean as we talk here right here right now i i, I always hate to say it on on the podcast but open honest conversation it truly is a last place team right now does it feel like a last place you know all that stuff would they be in last place in different divisions all that is part of the conversation sure but what's the bottom line fact it's a last place team right now Going forward, Johnny Junta, Gate 14 podcast, put a smile on her face. What's your predi- or will you? What's your prediction for this team going forward? This is not going to stay. I mean, it's they're not going to stay like this. Let's be real here. I mean, at some point, the offense is going to figure it out, and they're going to start hitting, and Bo and the, all of them are going to start hitting together. The pitching's there. Starting pitching is top 10 in baseball. The bullpen's really figuring it out. you got arms like Trevor Richards, Anthony, all these guys figuring it out now in that bullpen. Tim Meza. Besides yesterday, figuring it out. This, like the pitching has figured it out. Once the offense starts figuring it out, it's going to be a problem. This team is going to be a problem. And we saw last year, we've seen it in previous years. This team could just go on crazy runs Mm -hmm. and just skyrocket up a division and skyrocket to first in the wild card. Last year, they were 51 and 50 at one point or 52 and 51. I don't remember what it was, but, um, this is not going to stay. This is this is not going to stay like this. I promise you that. I I think <laughs> at some point there is going to be a crazy run. This team is going to go on that is going to propel them to like second wild card, even first wild card. It's not going to stay constant. It sucks to watch right now. It's still so early in the season, one third of the way. So much baseball to play. If you look at the Philadelphia Phillies last year, they were terrible. Weaseled mm-hmm. into the playoffs, made the World Series. All you need to do is just go on a little run. There's plenty of games left to do that. You go on a nice little run, like an 18 and nine run, you're all the way back up to the top of the, or to, like top three in the division, top two in the American League. So long season. This team has this, this team has the order, the batting order to do it. They have the firepower to do it. They have the pitching to do it. It's just putting it together and being able to do it. Johnny, that was sure. an absolute blast. Uh, thank you so much. I, 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 I mean, Gate 14 podcast to the moon, doing big things. So I imagine most of the people watching now are already familiar, but, but, for, for for those who aren't or 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 are familiar and just wonder you know what how do how do I get involved in the Gate 14 uh, podcast community uh, uh, where where can they go and check out your work Johnny Gate 14 podcast on Instagram Gate 14 po- Gate 14 pod on Twitter um on TikTok it's Gate 14 pod yeah just gate14.ca will take you there to all those places and stuff like that uh we got some cool uh t-shirts coming out um uh player t-shirts and stuff like that so stay tuned for that and uh yeah just let's just enjoy the season man i mean this is it's a long ride we're only in june i guess technically now so just enjoy the season man we're not even in the summer yet technically we're not even once we get to july then you guys can start worrying august you guys can start worrying just enjoy what's going on right now and uh just trust the process i guess Uh, that's 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 how i'll I'll leave it with trust the process of this team because you know they can go on these crazy runs That's a wrap for this week's Locked On Blue Jays. I hope your weekend is full of Toronto Blue Jay victories.